What's up? Welcome back. Today I'll be showing you guys how to connect your Stripe Pack to a PC to be able to play some Fortnite with it. Before the tutorial begins, I want to very quickly just say, if at any point you do find this video helpful to you, please drop me a like, it's very appreciated. And for more Strike Pack content and just Fortnite content in general, you can go ahead and subscribe to me and turn on those post notifications if you'd like to. And if you get confused at any point, you can go ahead and drop any questions down in the comments below. I have made one of these once before, it was about 8 or so months ago, but there are a lot of questions and I still get questions daily about it. It. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to put everything I know about the strike pack setup on PC in this video right here So your first step would be to obviously connect your strike pack to your controller So once you have your strike pack on your controller plug in the USB end of the cable provided with your strike pack to a Corresponding USB port on your PC. This means that not every USB port will work So you might have to do some unplugging and replugging in to see which one does work It has to be a USB USB port that corresponds with the motherboard otherwise your controller will look like this it'll just flash yellow and then turn off so go ahead and plug in your controller and if you plugged it into a correct port that corresponds with the motherboard it should look like this it should make a sound and then your light should turn on and turn a solid color. Now mine turns purple, I'll show you guys how to do that in just a second. At this point, head over to the link down in the description below and it should take you to this website and you shouldn't have to actually click anything, it'll just automatically send the download straight to your downloads bar and your SCP toolkit should be good to install. Now you need this to check and see if you actually have drivers installed on the strike pack because the drivers will interfere with the controller and Steam. So once you get to this, go ahead and choose your wireless controller. And once you've chosen your wireless controller, go ahead and click over here on uninstall. Some messages should pop up in the bottom right hand corner as you might be able to see. As you can see, mine said I may have never had the driver installed or I may have previously uninstalled it. That works or you might actually get a message that says that something was uninstalled and there's going to be a lot more messages there. But either way, it worked and you're on to the next step. You can go ahead and close the SCP toolkit. You will no longer be needing that. Now this process will be done through Steam. Steam is the application we're going to use to be able to get your controller to work on Fortnite. So if you don't have that installed yet, go ahead and install Steam. And at this point, if you do have your Epic Games Launcher open, go ahead and close out of that and make sure not just the application is closed, but go down here to double check, click this little up arrow. And if you see the Epic Games Launcher icon, go ahead and right click on that and click exit. Now, every time you will open Steam, you're going to have to run it as an administrator. There's two ways to do this. One of them is way easier than the next. The first way, which I don't recommend, is you can right click on it and simply click run as administrator. But every time you want to use your strike pack on Fortnite, you have to run Steam as an administrator. It's very easy to forget to run it as an administrator. So my suggestion is to do this. Right click on Steam, go to properties. Next, click on the compatibility tab and check this little box that says run this program as an administrator. You want that box checked. Click apply and now there should be a little shield right on your Steam icon. It might not be there yet, I don't know if it's instant or not, but when you click on Steam now to open it, a message to run it as an administrator should pop up and you should click yes. Now that brings you to this point, you're on the Steam homepage. You can go ahead and make an account or sign in, get to your profile and get to the homepage. And just as you wanna run Steam as an administrator every time you wanna use your strike pack, you wanna make sure that the Epic Games Launcher is closed every time you get on. If you're just booting up your PC, then your Epic Games Launcher is probably gonna be closed. But if you've been trying other stuff or whatever while you're trying to get this to work, make sure that your Epic Big Games Launcher is completely closed out of. Okay, Steam is open. Go over to the library tab and down in the bottom left hand corner, click add a game, add a non Steam game and browse. Follow this file location to find your Epic Games Launcher in your files. You're gonna wanna go to wherever you installed the game. Go to Program Files, Epic Games, Epic Games, Launcher, Engine, Binaries, and Win64. This should be where you're gonna find the Epic Games Launcher, and 
and you can double click on that. It's going to check mark the box next to the Epic Games Launcher and all you have to do is click add selected programs. This should add Epic Games Launcher into your library with whatever other games you have. At this point, go up to the top right hand corner and click these two arrows that say big picture mode. Now, if you've correctly followed all the steps up until this point, you should be able to actually navigate through Steam using your controller and your paddle should be working. And now you can go up here to this little gear icon, go to your settings and go ahead and click controller settings. This is going to take you to this page and obviously you just want to have your PlayStation configuration support box checked and not any of the other ones. Now Steam should be detecting a controller. So down here, as you can see, it says PlayStation 4 controller. You can click on that and you can click on preferences in here is where you can name your controller. You can also change the color of your light bar. So as you can see, I have mine on purple. If I start moving this down I can have it on red if I want I can have it on yellow green you can adjust the brightness and even the saturation you can turn your rumble which is the controller vibrations on or off you can go ahead and click submit on that you have all your preferences set up now go ahead and click the back button and we're gonna go down to the next setting below this and click com base configurations once you click on this click on desktop configuration it's gonna show you a page it might have a configuration selected already it might not anyway go down here at the bottom and click browse configs it's going to take you here. You're going to want to click on templates and then you're going to want to click on the second one down. The name of it is gamepad. You don't want the gamepad with high precision or gamepad with mouse and gyro. You just want the standard gamepad. Now it's going to show you a little preview of it and all the buttons and you're going to just click apply configuration. Now at this point, it should look like this. You can get more advanced with all these options in the future. Once you get more comfortable with the program, but if you're just beginning, just got on PC, just trying to get your strike pack to work then just leave it standard gamepad and click done however in the future you are actually able to use this layout to set up things such as you can set a controller button to a certain weapon slot so say you want to click square as your first weapon slot and you always keep your shotgun in your first weapon slot or you can set up scroll wheel reset. So all you have to do is click edit and click one button and it resets build. You can do different stuff like that. I have tutorials on both of those that are gonna be popping up in the right hand corner. But for now, we're just trying to get this thing to work. So go ahead and click done and then go back and back again, back to your main page in big picture mode. At this point, go ahead and click on your library go to games and find the Epic Games Launcher that you just added as a game. Click on this and go ahead and click Manage Shortcut. Now, once again, you're gonna see a controller configuration input. You're gonna wanna click that. And once again, it's gonna take you to this page, click Browse Config, go to Templates, and then go and select gamepad. Once again, apply configuration. And once again, it should look like this and you can go ahead and click done. Now you are done in big picture mode. You can click on this little power button and click exit big picture mode. It should pull back up Steam in the normal layout. At this point, click play on the Epic Games Launcher. It's gonna go ahead and bring up the Epic Games Launcher as it should. Go to your library and you can launch Fortnite. Now, if you followed all the steps correctly, you should be able to actually navigate with your controller and use your paddles in Fortnite. As I get spammed with invites from my little cousin, I'm gonna try to explain to you guys how to actually bind your paddles. It is a very simple process. So there are two little black buttons on the back of your strike pad. You will be binding your paddles one at a time. So to bind the first one, hold down the black button on the back of your strike pack and click whatever face button you wanna set that side's paddle as. So right now I'm on my right side. I have my right paddle set to edit, which is circle. So I would click circle and then I would let go of that black button. Now that right paddle should be set to circle and should be set to edit and should be working in game. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the left side. We're gonna hold down the little square black button. We're gonna click my left paddle bind, which is jump or X. So I'm gonna go ahead and click X 
and then I'm gonna go ahead and let go of that little button. Now both paddles should be in game and should be working as you have set them. So I personally don't use any of the mods. The mods are actually only for legacy look controls anyway. And legacy recently got taken out of the game anyway, so you can't use mods, but I've never used them as you can get banned. And I think it's kind of a dumb reason to get banned because they're not that good anyway. Otherwise, if you're just using the standard paddles in game, there's absolutely zero risk of ban. While messing around with your strike, pack you may have noticed that if you hold down the left button and then you click the right button it actually changes the colors of the eyes now when the eyes are blue that means it's on mod mode if you don't have any mods installed then it's obviously not going to do anything that's a whole separate thing you have to buy a mod pass and install them onto your strike pack but if you click that and you get your white eyes that means you're on tournament mode that means no mods will work even if you do have them installed and when you boot it up it should just be automatically on the white eyes the tournament mode now i get an insane amount of comments about this not working for people and most of the time it's a really simple solution it's either one the usb port is not the right one you have to mess around and unplug and replug and see which ones work two when you first get the strike pack it can be pretty difficult to actually plug in a lot of the time it just needs that extra push in to actually click you should feel a click when connecting your strike pack and that's when your light should be turning on or three Three, you guys are not opening the game correctly. Every time you turn on your PC, follow these steps. First of all, boot up your PC with your controller unplugged. Your second step will be to make sure the Epic Games Launcher is completely closed out of. Step three, go ahead and run Steam as an administrator. If it's gonna open up your Steam and maybe an ad or your friends list or something, go ahead and X out of that and click over to your library, click Epic Games Launcher, click play. Now is when you can plug in your controller. Go ahead, plug in your controller. The light should blink and then turn on the color that you set it to in your preferences. The bottom right hand corner should come up saying that it's using configs from whatever your profile name is in Steam. And then you launch your Fortnite application. And to help you out with any audio issues you may have in Fortnite with the strike pack connected, come down here to the bottom right hand corner to the volume, right click that and click open sound settings. Now you're gonna come over here and click manage sound devices. Go ahead and click that and anywhere where it says USB audio device, make sure to disable that. Otherwise, that's going to go ahead and default to your input and output in Fortnite and you're going to have no game audio as well as for your microphone so other people can hear you. Go ahead and click on that and click disable and this should prevent any audio issues in Fortnite. I had to learn the hard way. I've been playing Fortnite with my strike pack for right around two years at this point. I started back on PS4 and about eight or so months ago, I moved to PC with my strike pack. So with playing on it for that long, I have some tips to share with you guys to adjust to getting used to it and just improving with it in general. First of all, you want to find some optimized binds, the best binds you can find for the paddles. This is going to help you tremendously. Having good binds is more important than having the paddles themselves. I prefer my binds that I've been using, but you can always go and explore your options. I use left paddle jump, right paddle edit, and then I use all R3 switch mode and L3 confirm, but I also have confirm on release on, as well as I have L3 crouch and I have automatic sprint on. Everything else is builder pro default for the most part. So when you first get your strike pack, you're obviously going to want to keep that muscle memory of you sitting there and spamming A every time you wanna jump. I suggest to actually sit there and make a conscious effort to keep your thumbs on the sticks and use the paddles for those actions. It's gonna be so easy because you've been doing it for months or maybe even years at this point to just click A and then move back and look around and do that but try your best, just try to keep thinking about it. Keep thinking about, okay, I wanna jump, I click this with my paddle. Now, when I got used to these back in season four, there was no creative, so it did take me three to four weeks to actually get fully used to this, to get back to the point where I was before paddles. But at this point with creative and all the stuff you can do in creative, I say it would take maybe a week to two weeks to get back to the skill level you were without paddles, with paddles. And after that, you'll exceed far beyond on your previous skill level. Everything else past that is just extra progress. Now you will suck for a couple days, maybe 
even a couple weeks, you're gonna be bad at the game and it is so frustrating, especially when you were a pretty good player before paddles. So you're gonna be bad for a little bit, but just stick to it, it is so worth it in the end. Once again, if you do have any questions for me, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. If I did help you out in today's video, please go ahead and drop me a like on this video and subscribe for more Fortnite content and more Strike Pack content. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in my next video. A cool like series for you. Teaching my cousin my ways. I should have gotten that pyramid. Whatever. Whatever, I guess. Isn't that right, Casey?